So welcome back to the best of HR forums. Let's talk HR. So today we have a very familiar face with us. Uh, it's none other than Rahul Ishwar, who is a philosophy author, orator, and activist. He is an alumnus of the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, and London School of Economics. And as a Kerala, I'm so happy and proud that he is also a part of three Guinness World Records. He has participated in more than 1,200 debates in national and regional media. He has also been featured in BBC, CNN, New York Times, Channel for UK, Al Jazeera, Sputnik, Russia, and also in the national news media like Doordarshan, Republic, Times Now, NDTV, and a lot more. Ishwar has also written and featured in by newspapers, the Hindu Times of India, and also he has taken education sessions in more than 400 colleges across India, including IIT. And also he is a three-time TEDx speaker. Happy welcome, Rahul Ishwar. Thanks for accepting our invite and thanks for being here with us today. It's my privilege to associate. Thank you for that very good introduction, Swati. That's, that's really uh, nice to hear. So today, guys, today we are gonna talk about the most uh, you know, uh, peak topic, em employee relations and wellness. So Rahul, I just wanted to start like, we all work in a very uh, virtual reality, right? So we work remotely, we work, we connect through Zoom, we e-meet regularly rather than having a coffee. So how do you, how do you take this? How do you see this? Where is this world going? Yeah. First, I would like to say, even though the term virtual meet is perfectly okay, virtual teams are perfectly okay, I believe the right articulation and the right word should be digital teams and digital meet. Because the word virtual has another connotation. And more, more often than not, our mind, which is made up of information and impressions, tends to uh, see the world through the words we use. We tend to see the world through the words we use. So I would say virtual is absolutely perfect. There is no issue with it. I usually use a digital world or digital teams and digital meetup in a better way. I think this is going to be the norm for long, even after Corona, even the Corona vaccine is right now coming. But even after Corona, this is going to be a major norm for many companies because they can do serious cost cutting. Uh, they can work, uh, they can make people work efficiently from their homes and work from home. And the Digital India push will have an enormous backing because of the uh, COVID-19 crisis. And 2020 is going to be a year that redefined the way we worked and work-life balance in everyone's life. I mean to say that this work from home is actually helping people's lives uh in getting a good work-life balance? Uh, I wouldn't say that because right now, the uh, what in reality has happened is the uh, amount of work, the quantity of work has really increased. But one good thing that happened was uh, the uh, time which was used to spend for uh, travel, uh, commute in between, they got really decreased. And many people, uh, so, you know, there are different categories of people. Some people find a professional working environment with better air conditioners, with a more uh, professionally designed workspace, better energizing and better effective. And yet there are other people, especially from senior level management who believe work from home because they are mature enough to handle things. Uh, it is good to go with the home too. But this is going to be a norm for long uh, for a different economic reason. And that reason being many companies, for example, as you may know, uh, we have a company in Technopark, but many companies are leaving Technopark right now because they can seriously do some cost cutting. They can um, you know, give away the rent, forsake the rent and use it for other purposes. So at least uh, in the forthcoming future, many companies may opt for some kind of, such kind of a uh, work from model that is going to be a no. Whether we like it or not, we uh, get to learn the nuances of it. We get to understand the contours of it and we get to adapt uh, to the new reality. I agree to that point because that has been a proven fact now. The productivity is really increasing like anything. So I agree to that, Rahul, but uh, thinking in a contrary point. So as in, there are companies who are returning back to office, yeah. saying that we have projects in critical stage. We have productivity affecting. We have deliveries affecting. So when these are all happening, what do you, what do you think? 
in the beginning stage it was more like oh the productivity is really high the productivity is really high and we shall continue the same that was the same that was like this in the beginning stage initial stage but now there are certain companies who started thinking coming back to office correct so correct what do you think I, I, is the reason behind it what yeah, is I the believe, scenario i i believe different sectors will be affected differently you know i work more in the education sector even though there is a strong pull and leverage among all the children kids and teachers to go back to schools you know they really need to have that humane touch uh, that in classroom feeling even though the digital classrooms are okay they need to have that uh, there are other sectors like mentoring uh, speaking public speaking engagements or coaching online coaching such kind of a sectors they were less affected when you go to manufacturing and the other kind of sector there are many who feel who should go back to office because there needs to be a proper work environment so that's the reason why different uh, sectors are going to be affected differently and uh, two or three challenges just that really happened are one of the technical glitches i also apologize for the almost 15 minutes delay because i was trying to log in by 10 almost it got delayed because i had to change place so this is a serious issue uh, lack of proper communication lack of proper digital communication is an issue and there are many teams uh, who go for a, a non video kind of a mode so they feel they don't have enough uh, connectivity with the person in person connectivity with the employees so different sectors are going to have different kind of impacts and each sectors are going to have their own either unique solutions or back to companies and uh, to be honest to people like me i really wanted to go back to work because going to office is fun but uh, as we as we have seen and many of us thought in the initial stage uh, that work from home is never going to be efficient and productive that was proved wrong but it in effect got proved that yes there is efficiency in work from home and if you have a real good will and if you have a real good working space in home if especially you can manage both especially you know to our female folk uh, some people are having kids in the home they will make noise they will have a lot of issues so it's going to be a new normal we need to balance some sectors are going to come back big strong and some sectors are going to say work from home for some more time let's see how it works out yeah here i would like to put a scenario as in just uh, getting things more clear so just like in the initial stage there are companies or there are teams under companies who really work so well and have been appreciated by the employer itself but at a different level of time the same team has not been able to perform like what they did before so why is that what do you think at times they are not able to pro- produce the same kind of productivity and it affects the whole team right it doesn't affect the person absolutely, absolutely. it doesn't affect the individual it affects the whole team then it affects the work process again it's going to be get uh, a big headache in the deliveries so how, what do you think is the main reason behind it there are two or three reasons one is a psychological reason whenever you meet and greet a person whenever whether it be a male or a female whether it be a coworker you get a sort of energy from them there is a humane energy that is being transmitted via body language via tone via personal interaction via shake hands via meeting and greeting people this digital platform doesn't have that uh, transmission of energy which is more of a, a conceptual level thing a psychological level thing so you know you might have observed whenever we meet people swadi there is a kind of energy that always gets transferred so workplace has that energy dimensions that's the reason why in some companies you really work well you feel to work really well you are in a mood to really work well so this uh, really uh, gives a lot of energy into the system unfortunately when we work in the digital space we are still lonely only digitally connected so this uh, becomes an issue uh, yeah uh, there may be some people who are able to manage it but especially for freshers and the first level graduates they are missing that work experience and even if you are studying the on campus uh, usually say the on campus experience while you are studying and digitally studying are different i am right now doing a course from outside university but i would really love to go there and do the you know i mean do the course in the university because you are living there that lived experience is really going to create a huge change because that creates deeper impressions that creates deeper inspirations that many a times is missing is a reality so uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that's one as swati rightly pointed out that's one prominent reason why many companies would bounce back to work and go back to the old normal as we know yeah the you are right because the physical experience is something which cannot be compared with anything right so yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's something which everyone still misses it you know even it is we can say we are sitting at home and we are in our comfort zone we are working like in a very comfort stage but still they miss it they they 
everybody should have to agree to that point no other See, way whatever, left whatever we do digital cannot replace physical digital can only be complementary uh, to being physical digital can only supplement to the physical experience but maybe the companies there were some companies who had very strict work from home policies earlier they will be become more flexible they will be uh, ready to give uh, more extended periods of uh, Uh, work from home kind of thing. My wife is working in IBS, um, a techno park. Uh, she is also into HR. So you know, earlier they were having some reluctance, uh, maybe in asking for extended periods of such kind of work from home. Now they will be more flexible because at least productivity is not uh, being compromised in a big way. But uh, yes, as you rightly said, that physical experience is something everyone craves for. Okay, so coming to the work from home extension. there are two types of people which i have seen okay two categories of people one is more like oh i am very comfortable at home working from home like you know i am able to do my work and i am very comfortable to sit at home and just work and the other one oh my god it's a very big headache you know because i start from 9 and it ends at 4 o'clock in the morning i do not have a break you know they start talking like oh my god that that's a big headache for them so there are two categories of people which who see this work from home differently right so but the first category is okay because they are at the comfort zone they are healthy mm-hmm. uh, over their mind and physically they are healthy and good so that's really happy but the what about the other category of people who really says like oh my god it's 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 creeping my head you know starting from 9 in the morning i'm sitting at in front of my laptop till till some 1 o'clock 2 o'clock in the midnight so how do you see this how how do you how the how the people is going to uh, you know cope with this is it possible or is it going to be uh, initiate something very uh, uh, initiate something the the world has to look on to how do Absolutely. you see this rahul i i believe what swati has raised and asked is a very important question it can even lead to health crisis the reason being we are continuously sitting in in a place in the comfort of our home there can be serious back problems especially people who has issues with l4 l5 and l6 they can have serious health issues they are going to be stuck up in a room they are going to be less connected and the workload is going to be more so it's extremely important that they they take timely intervals that they things like yoga aerobics or something to keep themselves warm in between they keep on moving at some point of time they take regular breaks and they uh, take it among um, uh, themselves that they don't do two days work in one day and keep the other day for free there are many people you know even though it sounds ambitiously good but it can really harm you as an individual your body and mind as an individual for example there are x amount of work for two days to be uh, in two days that you have to finish what many people do is they will continuously sit for 12 or 14 hours and finish it in one day and they will think that they will take the next day as off or they can use it for something else what happens is it gets immense stress on your body it reduces efficiency precision clarity of thought see please remember work from home is you are recreating a mini office room a semi office room in your uh, home itself so you need to have a dedicated space you need to work well you need to take breaks in between really well and you need to be very cautious regarding the work life balance it is interesting and ironic to note that work from balance was more affected when people were working from home earlier rather than working from office work from home was seriously compromised when they were working from home so they need to know two words any management concepts basically involves two notions or two words at the core one is optimum and second is balance you need to have a sense of balance you need to know the optimum levels of stress leisure or any aspect that you have to take that it's a ba- it's it's a, it's, a, it's a synergy between being optimum and being balanced that's that's true and that's right i really appreciate it uh, rahul all right so uh now we are going to talk <laughs> i'm going to point out some something very uh maybe it will help some of the people who are watching so this work from home is a good norm we work now virtually that's that's all fine how about the relationship between the employer and the employee you know even at offices they have grudges they have arguments they have performance issues they have that problem this problem everything is there but in virtual meets there the probability is more the probability is high you know because there is a kind of whatever we say the virtual communication is not that much efficient that we all know that we all have to accept it right so how do you see this you know there might be grudges with the employee and employer there should be some point where the grudge starts 
it may be a peer revision may be a performance issue or maybe a disciplinary disciplinary issue or the culture of the organization but how are we going to manage this or maybe balance this employer relationships sir i think that's a very important question especially from a psychological realm that everyone should address see grudges are natural you will anyway end up having disharmony disagreements divergence of point of view but please remember how we manage it is extremely crucial there are two or three ways to deal with a grudge or anger you can either brush it totally under the carpet it is dangerous and damaging to you in the long run no it may give temporary some kind of a relief or a satisfaction but if you are going to brush it under your carpet that psychologically means you are going to brush it under your subconscious it will always haunt you it is always give you negative energy if i can use that word negative energy it will always uh, bubble up in your consciousness so it is going to have a long term damaging effect you on you and the relationship second it is immediate gratification and immediate release the boss or the manager gets angry you get equally angry back or you, you retort in a way that is uh, damaging to the hierarchy that is damaging to the respect structure that is inside an organization that will also cause trouble because you are going to be branded immature you are going to be branded short tempered you are going to be branded a person a male or a female who reacts violently or reacts in a too aggressive way so the right path is always called a middle path a middle path where where you are assertive if you know you can stand your ground but use a very a respectful tone in communicating what you want in a very respectful way also respecting the particular kind of hierarchy what is the crucial difference between corporate culture and the other culture in corporate culture there is a strict hierarchical structure we have to respect even though corporates sweeten it by selling that we are all in a horizontal structure we are all you know i used to work in ust global where we i was in hr2 so we always tell our employees we always tell people who we are here we are all equal but we do different jobs this is a posturing and positioning this is not in reality what is happening you know even though it's it's something to sweeten the entire thing see this is not entirely reflecting the reality there are hierarchies but in order to sweeten that hierarchies we use posturings like this that's very welcome to that really happens so you have to respect that hierarchy and you have to communicate you are ground in a very assertive way and trust me if you are going to do that in a respectful assertive way you will be respected even in the uh, management level for a long time you are neither going to be submissive you are not going to be aggressive there is an assertive path of standing your ground communicating and if you are having a grudge maybe in the rather than writing very unsavory things in the performance review rather than giving very bad things in the review later if you can communicate it out take one weeks time uh, communicate solve it clear the air melt the ice whichever term you want to call do a very thought out catharsis it's a very important concept called a catharsis it's from catharsis or uh, the modern concept of catharsis starting from uh, the famous psychologist uh, sigmund freud you know usually started from earlier times you know from the our uh, churches from our uh, christian churches where you tell things to a father and whenever you communicate things out it decreases you might have noticed once in swati whenever we share a positive emotion it increases and whenever we share a That's negative true. emotion yeah. it decreases this is a very plain psychological fact that everyone understands even from a childhood but when we when you grow up uh, you will have to manipulate things please remember management for all those people who would see this in future please remember management is not manipulation see many people misunderstand management as some kind of a manipulation it is not manipulation it is channelizing managing uh, controlling to an extent and channelizing in a positive way so talk it out by the weekend communicate that this was something uh, i would believe that you could have done differently if you really cannot talk it out in the first time please shoot a mail but let that mail not be angry let that mail not have too many caps lock let that mail and don't have a harsh tone see whatever you do please remember this scientific fact this is a scientific fact which i'm going to tell 7% of communication is through words 38% of communication is through tones and 55% of communication is through body language even when you send a email communication there is a word structure there is a tone structure and that structure is very underlying and implicit this was discovered the earliest statistics of 73855 was discovered by a great scientist a communication researcher called albert mehrabian Albert Mehrabian uh, you know contributed this and he pointed out 93% of our communication is non verbal so whenever you speak to a subordinate whenever you speak to a superior even without you being conscious there are many associated paraphernalia of body language and meta communication that is happening 
so whenever you speak speak out from a calm respectful mind more often than not if you are simply faking it people on the other side will find it out and they will have a grudge i would like to end by saying one thing please remember negativity has a very peculiar uh, <clears throat> capability of multiplying itself in mathematics in math we know negative into negative is positive but in real life negative into negative is more negative yeah. in real in math negative into positive is negative but in real life negative into positive is positive if you can return start returning by positivity which is an arduous task this is not as simple as being said it is an arduous task think about it reflect internalize but but no don't go for the revenge mode because once you lit the fire of revenge and grudge it will keep on being lit from both sides mm -hmm. yeah that's true i agree to that uh, rahul because you know nowadays the communication has not been very clear since we say we we have lots of meeting in a very one like in a single day we have more than 50 50 to 60 meetings you know because we need to communicate we need to get on track we need to be on the uh, we need to get updated so everything is on there but somehow the virtual communication is still affecting so that people are not getting the correct fact in a right way in a proper manner Absolutely. so that's how that's how or maybe they, that's where the their thought is triggering them to think more like a negative way or maybe more like a how they can uh, like the the point of view which they how they see it is really uh, differing so that's what i uh, i i understood all right so uh, and one more thing as in uh, we all say work from home we all know work from home some something which has its own both pros and cons okay but you know a employee or maybe an employee a person who is working with a company working from home he has his own personal situations at home his yeah. mother may be bedridden his father may be sick so he needs to take care and he needs to look after his kids you know they had their own kind of stuffs but being at home and working is not a very easy deal it's not very easy deal so we all know they what comes what comes like how can employee go with that and how can an organization help the employee with that because the employer should also have to understand that this employee is working for the company from home managing all the situations very true all his personal situations and the employee should also understand or maybe should show that leverageness to the company to make them informed to very keep true. them informed or maybe to make them keep them understanded like to make them understand like what he is into or maybe how we can take this forward because we know it's going to be extended for some time or maybe some companies have been announced that work from home is a their kind of work process that they're going to have in future right remote working so in order to avoid these kind of issues in order to avoid a better healthy employer relation how can this how this can be managed absolutely i i can see that swathi is speaking from her soul because you know you are having such conviction in saying what you are saying i i absolutely believe if you can also give a comment regarding the past question and this question joining both it would be very nice see when whenever there is a process of remote working uh, the employer the manager the senior needs to be more empathetic that needs to be understood you have to understand the different working situation of people see our mind is affected by the place we are in our mind is affected by circumstances so when you are coming to office you can totally shut off the issues in your house but when you are working from home there are a lot of issues in the home that needs to be uh, uh, adapted to that needs to be understood so the manager also has to see that's also the relevance of the past question you asked how do you that negativity naturally emerges please remember just like the iron rusts human relationship and employee employer relationship all keep on rusting after some time you need to continuously clean it and keep it you know in a shining way that's the reason why i keep on saying whenever i go to manager speeches one of the great verses in holy quran and that really inspired me was uh holy quran 4134 surah fusillat that's a very beautiful idea where you say respond to negative with positive and negative is won over see respond to negative with positive and negativity is over see this is a very important thing that we should internalize and assimilate what that's we awesome. usually do yeah. yeah 
that we what we usually do and you know it's it's more beautiful when you when you tell it in arabic and the original form it says whenever you know you have an enmity when you are when you have an enemy or what you can tell a corporate grudge or enmity or anger whichever negativity you have see if that person if you respond with positive you finish off the enmity itself rather than thinking about harming the enemy you finish off the enmity that's the whole idea of what we had in indian culture called shatru samhara puja where you don't uh, tend to finish off the person but you end the shatruta or you end the enmity but unfortunately people interpret in a different way and thought that you know god is giving to uh, you know god is going to uh, give some kind of uh, issue to the other person as if god is some kind of a gunda or, or the deities are some kind of uh, revenge taking mechanism see that's how we misunderstand so this is extremely important it's a very simple line that can really change things respond to negative with positive and the negativity is won over and from my personal experience i can be very realistic about this and not being idealistic and utopian once twice and thrice you know i have responded negativity with positivity once twice and thrice within this three times i can confidently say 95 percentage of the issues are over see this is never an exaggeration see one time maybe it doesn't happen say but please don't be disheartened one time a person is giving you negativity you are responding back with positivity the person is again having sarcasm contempt negativity disrespect this happens do it second time and do it the third time and after the third time i don't try i'm i'm willing to accept the fact that 5% of the people we cannot mend our relationship with that's a reality there are 5% of the people in this world who we cannot mend our relationship almost 75% of people you can going to have an excellent relationship if you try well 20% you will be in the shades of gray in the very much gray area so whenever there is a manager please make it a point like the modern greatest scientist a second albert einstein stephen hawking says communication is the greatest tool and communication is one of the greatest things you have in life unfortunately he as a person is not able to communicate maybe he realized it from that he communicates by continuously moving his finger he has a very rare disease through which he cannot uh, communicate uh, like us so communication is a great tool take some time out if you want to you know write it down manage your emotions in a good way let that not be an emotional catharsis and throw it back in a big way don't throw tantrums have a very well settled demeanor a good tone but please make sure that you talk it out if you suppress it for too long you become a multi you you will have some kind of a multiple personality disorder that's you know this call in psychology in science it's called a dissociative dissociative identity disorder so many people have that see what happens is in corporate culture they either becomes aggressive so that they want to get the things done or they either play too much of the yes yes boss man yes sir yes sir man uh, no Uh, so that they end up become too submissive and they take it upon their family uh, to show their aggressiveness you may have seen many people in the office where there are too submissive in their in their offices and when they go back to their homes they become too aggressive or this the other way around maybe there are some managers of yours who are too aggressive rash you know uh, very kind of hard not to crack but when they go back they will be kind of you know humble cats in their home so we usually say in a very lighter tone you know since he cannot take it out on his wife he is trying to take it out on others is anger <laughs> so you need to balance your emotions in a way see and that's the reason why even though we tell there is a work life balance you have to keep it apart work affects life and life affects work or to be more precise work affects personal relationships and personal relationship affects work we need to find a harmony they are they are not watertight compartments even though we can broadly compartmentalize it that's the reason why your question becomes relevant i may be having a ailing mother i may be having a troubling sister or a brother so the manager should understand patience is one of the most crucial virtues for a person who is in the power of position patience is one of the most crucial virtues for a person who is in the position of power and mahatma gandhi rightly pointed out in the earlier centuries power means you have muscles you have uh, uh, power to attack and change people but in this century he meant in the past and maybe this century too uh, powerful means uh, manager means leader means getting along with people say 1000 years back it was you might have seen the movie avenger yes. avenger the thor is the idea of strength thor who can smash things who can destroy things or in our culture bahubali was the earth stick you might have yeah. seen that bahubali movie a bahubali is a person who kills people he is the leader but in this century leader means a person who can get along well with people so from thor 
to bahubali to gandhian model the leadership model also has evolved so the way to get along with people is to understand them and if you are in a manager position i would strongly recommend you do two or three courses which are hardly one or two or uh, three days long one is ta psychology that's called a transactional analysis psychology by eric burn if you can ask people like best of hr heads or biju or you know any other person they will be able to arrange trans ta psychology is a very good course you will have a hardly one or two day session nlp neuro linguistic programming is really good because you can understand human interactions or any base psychology level course because please remember whatever you have learned 5 years down the line in your career ladder you will end up somewhere in managing people understanding psychology operations all these things will happen to you human resource angle will happen to you because that's how you grow that's how you move a team so some understanding of psychology is extremely crucial for every <laughs> i get it i get it rahul and that was really interesting let's see how we can uh, let's see how i and biju can take the, those courses and how we can transfer the knowledge to other people as well so thank you so much for that and uh, uh with with one question i'm i am planning to conclude this so what is your thought regarding mnc and a startup because mnc startup both are having work from home both are having remote uh, working culture nowadays but it's not the same so how do you see it and how a startup can mold or maybe can build a good employee healthy relationship because startup is something which they focus in building a very strong base right it's not like an mnc so how can a startup implement or maybe how can a startup be more focused on building a good employee relationship as every organization never fails to say employees are their assets so how can a startup focus on that in remote working please remember even though when we started saying almost 10 to 15 years ago that employees are their assets you know it is not something like a slogan or a sweetening word it's a reality human resource is going to be the biggest capital i know in the coming years because human beings are unique they have their own unique talents capabilities network their connectivity their abilities so it's very important that a startup learn to manage themselves in a really good way they need to have a very vibrant hr team as you know the senior structure of the mnc the corporates they have a proper process in place please remember you no know, things can be two or three oriented one is a process oriented thing second are a people oriented thing we need to have a balance of both process orientedness and people orientedness so mnc is the corporates the senior uh, you know people who are more experienced has a proper uh, process in the place and unfortunately many startups don't understand the need of that process so they ne- also need to have a very uh, sound process very well thought thought process there may be one in 100 companies that can do impromptu actions that can do sudden improvisations and get along that's a possibility but nobody is saying no we can only look for a rule not for an exception we can only look for a rule and never for an exception so please go for that proper process because unless there is a proper process in place you will always end up being less effective have a very well set deadline have proper working hours hourly is defined have uh, morning meetings and evening meetings these are extremely important see you kind of energize yourself and which is the most important process in a startup i would always say it's the first day induction program that's extremely crucial it's like giving a key to a particular stuff you are psychologically inspiring a key to a particular person where his behavior is managed where his or her attitudes are managed after some time the power of induction will go down the motivation level will go down it's natural see it's we are human beings so we you know we need to be in a continuous dynamic move so once in a while i really appreciate biju swati and your entire best of hr team these kind of learning sessions interviews interactions are extremely crucial because our mind needs continuous inspiration daily dose of motivation to keep on going through it and we get ignited once in a while maybe you have seen when you look at instagram when you look at beautiful faces when you look at um uh, youtube here speeches here some concepts some interactions you need to continuously ignite your mind so that it functions really well if you are going to be lethargic you are going to fall down 
so that continuous ignition is a process uh you know when i was in one of the companies of technopark we were the largest hiring company in technopark we used to have this daily process once in a while we used to get uh, some speaker some kind of a training method and one serious thing that really suffered in this process was training see training needed to have a personal touch that you know you can speak to 100 people but training can only happen for 20 or 30 people our company was doing lifeology was doing the process for kerala government we are also partners of up and tamil nadu government what really happened was when the digital came in the training real aspect really got missed so listening is one thing being involved in a class doing a role play doing a management game so if you keep on doing this once a week or at least twice a week mm-hmm. find one hour for it it will be awesome then people will be energized they will feel the meaning they will feel the passion and i would like to end by saying please remember this crucial aspect there is no one fit all kind of a rule for any corporate or any human being generally speaking people are divided into four this is called psychometrics psychometrics is a branch of psychology that emerged in the past century just like you have biometrics swati might have taken the aadhar card so you might have given your biometrics your eye your retina scan your thumb scan and all yeah. biometrics yeah. is the process by which you measure a person using his biological or her biological traits psychometrics is the measuring and managing of a person using the psychological traits you have things like mbti you have things like face assessment so please do a psychological assessment it, it is not going to involve much cost there are much free things in the internet too or with a very minimal amount you can have so people are different swati's motivation and inspiration might be different from mine my kind of a personality might be slightly different than your kind of personality i am a person who responds well to written mails and messages there might be other people who work well with oral instructions there might be other people who work well with visual instructions biju may be may be having a different type where he wants to work alone in solitude so that he can perform well there are other people who can work well in a group unless they have a team they won't be able to do my personality is just the opposite all the crucial work what we call you might have heard of hard work you might have heard of smart work right there is a new very important concept called a deep work the you know my concept of deep work or my sense of deep work is whenever remove all distractions sit in a place where you go for 2 or 3 hours continuously by shutting out every other stimulus from the outside this is my person my kind of personality so whenever i have to take crucial decision where we have to spend millions of rupees on something or other i go for a deep work model but there are other group of people who work well in a group so unless the manager has a psychological understanding of the psychometrics or the different profiles of the people he won't be able to or she won't be able to manage because i you i will be trying to manage you in the way i am please remember i am not the scale for everyone neither swati is going to be the scale for everyone neither biju is going to be the scale for everyone each one has a different scale unless the manager understands this that's the reason why you might have heard in army the most important test is the psychometric profiling yeah, and even yeah. even dr apj abdul kalam was rejected the you know the urban legend has it that the army told abdul kalam you have a great head when to decide to shoot but you know you may not be able to shoot as such you can decide when to fire this but you are not good enough to fire this by yourself so understand people in their uniqueness harnessing their energy with harmony to their personality is going to be the core management principle for the century absolutely rahul and you know these these things will only happen if our chain of thoughts are on the right track correct so i really appreciate it and thank you so much rahul for accepting our invite and being here with us today and sharing your wonderful thoughts with us so i hope this will help all the people who watch this so thank you again rahul we are looking for more collaborations with you so we are hoping to meet you over it, there it, it was a, it was a pleasure the questions were very sharp i believe that elicited so you know some of my good responses if i can say that the questions were sharp the interaction was very healthy and positive and i uh, applaud mr biju um, swati and best of hr and i know i think i have quoted best of hr twice or thrice when i went to other spaces where i said we need such kind of organizations such kind of coming together platform where you can mutually enrich please remember the most important skill for 21st century is going to be upskilling ourselves 
this upskilling reskilling upgrading ourselves is the most crucial aspect because whatever we are going to learn it will be outdated in the next 5 years so you have to continuously update yourself you have to continuously upskill yourself so i hope best of hr will emerge as one of the best teams in kerala and perhaps our nation which can help all the hr professionals all the people in this particular platform to upgrade themselves and upskill themselves because those two things are going to be defining your entire career and professional life upskill yourself and upgrade yourself thank you swadi for this great thank you rahul thank you